Hey everybody, it's Josh Dorkin from BiggerPockets.com, your hub on the internet for real estate investing, advice, information, you name it. Today we've got an interview with Mr. Greg Brister. Greg is from Joshua, Texas, great place to be. I've never been there, but it sounds pretty cool. <laughs> and and uh, Greg can be found on Bigger Pockets at BiggerPockets.com slash users slash runum, R-U-N-U-M. And his website is thechargerproperties.com. Greg, how's it going? Nice to oh, nice to meet you. How you doing? I'm doing good. How you doing? <laughs> I'm good. Oh, I'm good. Now you're gonna get the Boston accent going there. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to see I'm you, man. All right. I, I hope I hope most of our users can understand what you're saying, but uh, we'll we'll try. I'll translate if if we need to. That's all right. I come from that uh, foreign country called Texas. You know, uh, I, I yes, <laughs> absolutely. So, Greg, tell us tell us about yourself. I know you're a landlord. Um, give us give us some details, a little bit about your background, real quick, and then let's get into what we're gonna get into here. Okay, I'm a school teacher first during the day, but in the evening, I'm a I'm a part time landlord, or I guess a full time landlord. I guess you can't be a part time landlord. Yeah. I've been doing it for uh, about five years now, sure. and uh, I've got over ten properties. And uh, you know, I, I didn't get into it for a long time because of the uh, the boogeyman stories. But I got to tell you, if, if you if you can do landlording, you'll you'll know it. If you can you can you can handle this. I haven't had the boogeyman stories. So. <laughs> Yes, I've got good tenants, good residents, and I'm very blessed. So, uh, You're a lucky man. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, sometimes I make my luck, I guess. Uh, but, for sure. Anyway, but yeah, I, uh, I I don't have the fire to do the uh, the rehab and flip. So uh, landlording, I enjoy that. I okay. enjoy that. Absolutely. So today uh, we had spoken a little earlier and we had talked about, you know, something that we wanted to cover that you're pretty passionate about, I think, is the concept of getting a loan. Um, yeah. Everybody says, you can't get a loan, you can't get a loan, it's so hard to get a loan, and Greg is going to show us that that is not the case. So let's get into it, man. Tell us, bank funding, is it available or what? It is available, but you've got to prove yourself. You've got to, uh, you, your job as an investor is to get to yes. Uh, the banker, You've got to convince him. Uh, the first steps, uh, bank with a uh, local community bank, uh, state bank, local bank, uh, don't go to the First National, whatever. They're not going to know you from Adam. The other thing is to go inside. Always go inside. Don't mess with the drive through It's a waste of your time. Go inside, shake everybody's hand, get to know everybody, even the tellers. Get to know them by first name. Sure. Shake their hands, ask about their kids, their wives, their husbands, how their life is going. Right. Establish a rapport. Yeah. Then, whenever you got that going and you found that hot deal, then you need to go and build yourself a presentation. Sure. You don't just walk into the bank and say, "I need a loan." Or go, I also want to rent it. You know, it doesn't work that way. Let me you translate don't. that for those people who didn't understand. I got a loan. I want your money. <laughs> that's right. That's right. You know, so uh, you got to go in there and you got to, you, you're going to have to do this legwork anyway. It's called due diligence. Yep. And you might as well present it and put it in a nice little package for the banker because he's going to ask you the questions anyway. Right. And it's just, it's expediting the process. Okay. So the way I do it is I go to Staples or wherever, the office supply store, and get a really nice bright red folder. Uh, my color is red because I don't want that thing lost in the pile. You know, when I give it to the banker, I want it to scream it for attention. Absolutely. Uh, bright color, yellow, pink, orange, whatever. But yep. my bankers know the red folders are mine. All so right. Red's off limits for anybody around my area. <laughs> patent <laughs> the pending. Other, sorry? I said oh. patent pending, the red folder. That's right. That's right. And then, of course, it's just a simple open folder. On one side, I put my business card. The other side, I usually put the back of my business card. Okay. And so it... Give them your contact information. It doesn't do any good to give them a pitch if they don't know how to get a hold of you to say yes. Right. You know, you got to give them your contact information. Then on the left side, I put you got. Uh, I went down to my banker and I got a copy of their financial statement. Okay. And a blank one, and I scanned it into my computer. And so whenever I know I'm going to do a deal, I print it off and I fill it out before I go to the bank. Fantastic. Because you got to do it anyway okay. every single time. 
So I've already got it. I walk in the door. It's already filled out. Because that's the first question he said. You got a financial statement? Yes, it's right here. Cool. Yep. You're, you're ahead of the game. Then I've got a, uh, a summary of where I am now. Okay. Uh, all of my deals that I've got going on now, I've got pictures. I've got spreadsheets. I've got uh, all kinds of information about how the properties are performing now. That's uh, great. What I'm doing is establishing business credibility. Yep. I'm new, then I'm going to have to figure out another way to establish some credibility. Maybe I have some credibility uh, in other areas of business. References, resume, things like that. Correct. Yes, you got to give. You got to show them that you're a rock steady client. Yep. All right. Then once I've got the left side taken care of, then I've got on the right side. I've got a little a summary of the proposition. The uh, it's just a very one or two page short summary, bulleted. And it's got maybe one picture of the property. Sure. It tells uh, what the asking price was, what the what I agreed price is, taxes, uh, estimated insurance. It's just a very basic summary. It tells um, what I could rent it for based okay. on my history that I've got over here. This is my history. Right. And so I've got all that summarized right here. Yeah. And then behind the summary, I've got pages and pages of documentation to back up everything I say. Okay. I've got a copy of the MLS listing. I've got a, a CMA, a comparative marketing analysis from a realtor. Right. I've got uh, comparable rent rates based on either my experience or based on what the realtor can tell me if it's not in my area. Um, I've gone to my taxing authority. I've printed off the actual tax documents so I know of my documentation. I'm not just shooting in the breeze here. Right, right. Uh, I've got a, an email from my insurance agent giving me an estimate on the insurance cost. Beautiful. Uh, I've got multiple pics of the property. Uh, if I've taken them, sometimes I can get them off the internet. Right. Uh, just shots, things like that, and just uh, just pages and pages of, uh, of pictures. But the, and then I'll have a uh, copy of my uh, contract, the agreed to contract, in okay. case the banker to see the contract. But one of the coolest things I like to do is I type a uh, Google picture, Google Earth. Oh, yeah. And it, I don't know if y'all can see it, but there, that's a Google Earth. And it's, I, I screenshot it, put it on paint, put the yellow box around the subject property right. to let the banker know how this property fits in with the neighborhood. And so also um, Zillow offers some really good aerial photography sure. of a lot of properties. Gotcha. And so you screenshot those and print those off. And so you've got all kinds of documentation to show your property. That's fantastic. How it fits in the neighborhood. Yep. Um, I get a, if I get a survey, I'll include the survey. Um, and then any extra information that I might know about that property that maybe the seller doesn't know. For instance, I just bought a property that is supposed to be within 1,000 feet of a pending freeway. It's okay. supposed to be built in the next three years. So I've printed off the, uh, the state of Texas proposition on the freeway, the route, right. and I put it on the Google Earth so that you can see the route where it is right beside the property. Gotcha. And so the banker's looking at added value there. Yeah. So if he loans you the money, he knows you know, you've got a property that's going to be worth some more money later on. Gotcha. So that's, that's, a, that's a serious package there, man. You're, uh, you're, you're the absolute business professional. You, you, know, you come in, you walk in, you got the you know, the Hawaiian shirt on, you got the package. <laughs> Hawaiian shirt, I speak Texan. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you start confusing people when you walk in like that. But no, that's, that's great. That packet is, I mean, it's very thorough. It's got everything that the banker could potentially want. Um, right. And I mean, it's kind of hard to say no. I mean, you know, to, you'd have to come up with an excuse to say no. Um, right. If 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 you're a banker now, huh? Show me what I've done wrong, and I'll fix it. Yeah. You know, um, if you don't have a document, I usually leave it blank and say like the insurance estimate pending. Yeah. And then as soon as I get it, I'll call them up or email them, and, and they'll pencil it in, and, and we're still ready to go. Yeah. But your banker, your local banker's got to go to a board to get it approved. Yeah. And you do this, you make him look good. Yep. You make the banker look good, he's going to make you look good. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's a great key. You know, I, I you know, I I don't disparage the big banks necessarily. Some of them uh I owe a little bit of money to, but uh <laughs> you know, I do, but they bought my notes. So uh, yeah. But I but 
but I mean, you know, I, I, I think going to the local bank, the community bank is, is definitely uh, a good option. I, I, I think you're definitely going to get a lot more personalized service. I, I think the opportunity for, for getting to yes is, is certainly going to be a lot higher. Um, any other tips uh, for, for get, getting that yes besides being prepared as a Boy Scout? Uh, go in dressed nice. Don't go in looking like a slouch. Uh, you know, go in look, uh, treat your business like a business. It's yep. not a hobby. It's a business. Yep. You want to be treated like a businessman? Go in and act like a businessman. Yep. That's great advice. You know, I... I think that's that's one of those things that a lot of new investors just can't get right. Um, you know, you said it yourself. You're a school teacher, right? You're a school teacher who's a landlord. So during right. the day, you're busy teaching the kids. You're a professional school teacher. Right. At night or whenever you do your investing, you're a professional real estate investor. You're a professional Absolutely. businessman. Act Absolutely. professionally, and people will treat you that way. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. That's great, man. No, this is fantastic. I, th I think a lot of people are going to find this valuable. Um, got about a minute or so left. Uh, any other tips that you want to share as, as far as being a successful landlord? You know, we, we, we often talk to landlords, so we all get screen, screen, screen. Give me something that's not screen your tenants right. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. Um, treat them. Treat them like humans. You know, these these are your customers. Yeah. Don't forget to say thank you. Yeah. You know, these people are they are they are your customers. Treat them. You know, sometimes you might have to listen to a little bit of a sad story. Yeah. I, I don't like to listen to them either, but sometimes you need to spend that time with your customer. Yeah. You know, it's sure sure cheaper than going out and trying to find a new customer. Yes. Yes. The, uh, co the yeah. cost to acquire a new customer is is not inexpensive. Right. I agree. So. Uh, Treat your customers like customers. Uh, that's yeah. great, man. That's great. Well, listen, some some really great golden nuggets here, Greg. I think uh, I think people are going to find a lot of value in it. Um, certainly, would love to talk to you again. Hopefully, everybody understood you. I certainly did. <laughs> so I got no problem with Texas. I love it. All right, all right. Y'all um, come on down. All right, I I would love to, man. Shoot, I definitely would love to. Um, before we let you go, let's 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 hit you up. Let's give you a plug again. It's Greg Brister. The Charger Properties is the website. Thechargerproperties.com. Greg can be found on Bigger Pockets at biggerpockets.com/users/runum r-u-n-u-m. And any other way people can get in touch? I I've got Twitter and Facebook, but I I don't use it for business. That's okay. all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right, man. Well, it's a pleasure. Hopefully we can do this again and cover some other topics and maybe you'll bust out like the, your pink folder trick and the brown fold, you know. There we go. That's right. I, I, I am the master of folders. I do have a lot of folders. All right. Hey, Greg. Thanks again, man. All right. Thank you, Josh. Take care.